We've been talking about Aquaman 2 being a failure and kind of the last nail in the coffin for a dead DCEU for a long time. And it didn't exactly come as a surprise because quite frankly, what seven of the last DCU movies have failed at the box office. And they already announced they're rebooting this thing. Everyone knows the franchise is dead. Yet somehow there's a lot of people who feel very upset that in their opinion, they don't see the same kind of hate. They don't see the same kind of coverage over Aquaman 2 flopping as it did for the Marvels. Here's this guy. Jeez. Both critically and financially, Aquaman 2 is performing noticeably worse than the Marvels. They're both sequels to billion-dollar blockbusters. Yet I don't see any hit pieces from the trades when it comes to this movie sh starring a man. The uh. math ain't mathin'. Um, you've got Brandon Davis. Aquaman 2 flopped, yet I don't see a parade in the streets like when the Marvels underperformed. Both were sequels to billion-dollar movies. What's the difference? You got this, dude. Domestic opening totals, the Marvels Aquaman. Interesting to see those who came for the Marvels stay silent and not bring that same energy for Aquaman 2. <laughs> Number one. Black girl magic! A lot of us have been keeping that same fucking energy. Number one. Also, yes. when you look at the trades... Hollywood Reporter, Variety. What are the articles there? Aquaman 2 delivers a lump of coal on Christmas holiday. Variety is like, Aquaman 2 sinks at the box office. They are fucking putting this thing on blast. Now, there is a difference between a $300 million plus the Marvels movie that had the biggest flop in the history of the franchise, not when they've announced that it's done, not if they said we're rebooting, not when it's a dead franchise, but in the middle of its run and what we saw with Aquaman 2. But the biggest difference to me, Jeremy, is these fucks, these retarded pieces of shit who are trying to still shill for the Marvel somehow. The biggest difference between these movies are you're not blaming fans for the failure of Aquaman 2. You're not blaming men for the failure of Aquaman 2 like right. you did back then. And shockingly, when you shit all over people, they might come back and talk a lot about that like, like they did with the Marvels. Yes. And... Ultimately, when your defense of your failed movie is the using another failed movie, that's probably a bad place to be in right there. That's probably a really bad place to be in. Um, your way of defending the Marvel's failure is to point out the failure of Aquaman and say, hey, this movie that failed just as bad as my movie that failed hey, yeah, they're not covering this in the same way. It's a completely different situation. Um, at no point in time was there ever a narrative that Jason Momoa or Aquaman was the center of the universe for the DC properties. Um, there was a narrative that Captain Marvel and the Marvels was the centerpiece of the uh, MCU moving forward. That was something they were trying to get forward. Um there's a lot of different variables that go into this, but at the end of the day, what it really comes down to, I think Ryan's point is the most valid of, of them is the DC's already announced that they're moving on. Like this is a dead, this is a dead iteration of properties uh, that they've done with the DCU. This is it. They are rebooting. They're restarting. It's starting all over. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is still going on. It's still happening as we speak right now. They are still moving forward with this continuity and these characters and. For that reason, the Marvels is a far bigger flop and a far bigger disaster. And again, look, man, uh, the people that were crying uh, about this are the same people that were celebrating the success, saying that all the all the chuds were angry and mad. And um, ultimately, it was fool's gold. We all knew it was fool's gold. And here we are uh, watching it all play out. Yeah, there's been so much of this over the past couple of days. These butthurt fucking cucks that are just simping still for the Marvel, still trying to say, well, it's men's fault that it didn't happen. Well, it didn't have any marketing, blah, blah, blah. Men showed up for the Marvels. What, 65% of the audience was male for the Marvels. It's all these fucking women that you pandered to that didn't show up. So maybe wait, have some of the same energy. All you fucking cucks who want a white knight for a little bit of pussy, maybe have the same energy towards all the women that didn't show up to support the Marvels that you have towards the male fan base. Because that was the audience. They came out and fucking admitted it. We saw directors. the demographics. We saw the demographics. We know the demographics. Exactly. And you, you got Nia DaCosta shitting all over fans. You've got the media trying to protect Nia DaCosta, say, well, it might be a flop, but it's not her fault. Right. Th this is the type of energy. This is what creates some of the conversation on social media when you see the trades being so disingenuous. Mm -hmm. So the fact that these fucking losers are out there trying to set this narrative now, 
it's really pathetic. Well, and the whole thing is like, and a lot of this is uh, the the shill media. Like, if you go back, all of the Brie Larson videos I've made, I would say over half of them are not about Brie Larson as much as they're about the media's treatment of Brie Larson and how they were basically uh, crowning her this queen, this you know, this dominant force, uh, the first woman that's ever been in a movie type of energy that they were putting into it. I, it, there were so many Brie Larson articles and so many Brie Larson stories out there. The media just sent it to a, a level that I'd never seen. And so that's why so many got made. Um, some were specific about her for sure, but a lot of them just had to do with the media's treatment uh, and the praise of her and the blind praise of her. So if you're mad, stay mad. The movie flopped. It's a failure. The fans were right. The fans have always going to be right. Um, that we have called this out for a while, and now the Marvels has become the biggest failure in the history of the MCU, and it's not even close. What's the next? What's the next closest failure to Marvels for the MCU? What's the lowest grossing movie? Hulk. In the- <clears throat> Incredible Hulk. So, From so two thousand eight. <laughs> So we're talking about the 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 Marvel Cinematic Universe having its biggest flop since 2008, whereas the DCEU has had flop recently, it, a lot it, of flops. It, this this is going to end up being its second highest grossing movie this year, probably. <laughs> right? It's oh, it's going to beat Blue Beetle. It's going to beat Shazam: Fear of the Gods. Will it beat Flash at 260 million? That's really the question. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the so so this is par for the course for the DCEU this year. Whereas the Marvels, this is a, again, the MCU has been in trouble, but trouble for the MCU would be a massive success for any other studio. Um, This right here, this was a disaster with the Marvels. So it set a whole new standard for failure for the MCU. So that's the difference. And guys, I know, I know, respect women, uh, male feminists. uh, They are going to do anything they can to stand for women and respecting women online, but it's not going to get you laid, I promise you. Fucking, the Marvels had a budget that was almost equivalent to Infinity War. Like, and that's what we know. Infinity War's production budget claimed $300 million, right? The Marvels, $274 million, and that's before an entire year of reshoots, visual effects, stuff like that. And we're talking about a movie that made $200 million at the fucking global box office. So yeah, it's a, I would say it's a pretty big failure. It's Hollywood, baby. 